They may look like remote control toys, but it's far from child's play. Experimental autonomous vehicles are the future of driverless cars. Today in Brisbane, engineers of the future took to the track to pit their inventions against each other for the annual Droid Racing Challenge. They're racing for the glory. Who can design and build the fastest vehicle to drive itself around this course? The catch is they can't run over the lines or bump into obstacles or the competition. This is serious business. As well as being judged on their ability to navigate the track, these cars are also judged on speed, distance and style. So robotics, I've had an interest in since I was in high school. Like my electronics teacher in high school really like put the enthusiasm for all that sort of stuff in me. So in high school, I built a 3D printer and then I was like, oh, okay, I can make robots. It's really satisfying to program things and have them doing something in the real world. Software by itself is great, but there's only so much you can do if you, it's just on a computer. But if you have a robot, it's really cool to see it moving around and actually doing things in an intelligent way. Well, in the past, I've done lots of stuff with things that fly, so helicopters, aeroplanes, quadcopters. But I'd never dealt with cars before, so I felt that DRC would let me do something new, learn about another type of robot that I hadn't worked with before. And I found that challenge very rewarding. We needed someone to get the ball rolling, pretty much, to organise who was going to be in it and how we're going to do all the administrative details. So I volunteered to do that and I thought it was a cool competition. Well, our process was basically we put up posters, put out Facebook posts, just looking for people in general. We tried to spread the posters around to get a broad range of people. We were trying to look for not just the most experienced people, but the people who could do it in the future. We didn't want it, this to be like a one year thing. As long as they could do what they said they could do, whether it be software or hardware, that was all that mattered. So we have about six members of our team. A few of us were in second year, so myself and my other boy, we were fairly new to how working in big university groups would work out. So we learned a lot about that dynamic on this project. We had a student who was a mechanical engineering student, so he helped lots of our mechanical design, working out aerodynamics, steering, that sort of stuff. And then we had a couple of really experienced students in their final years of university. They helped us with some of the more complicated computer vision and software stuff. So I, I wrote most of the high level software, in particular the vision code. So we were working with a stereo camera and the idea was that we needed to, to use the information from that stereo camera, particularly the depth image, to, to, to figure out where the lines are, the, the sidelines of the course and also the, the, the obstacles. Uh, so we need to figure out where those are in 3D space and then sort of do some trajectory planning to, to, to figure out where the robot should move. At the beginning, we sort of did a lot of the design stuff, but then, you know, assignments and exams basically got us until like a couple of weeks before the competition and then after everyone finished their exams then we just went like full wall into actually designing and building the thing properly. We, we certainly would have liked more time. Um, we only actually got the robot properly moving uh, the night before the competition. So um, I think if we had maybe another week, we could have definitely produced something that, that would have placed higher in the rankings. So on the front of our robot is an Intel RealSense camera. This is a stereo camera, so it's basically two cameras side by side and that gives us very good depth perception for the robot. It's a four-wheeler, so there are two wheels at the front and then two wheels at the back. Each wheel is independently driven. It's a brushed motor with a 20 amp electronic speed controller. If we go under the hood now, I'll just undo the tape there and then lift this up. You can see we have an Intel NUC as our main processing unit. So the camera plugs into this, and then the NUC plugs into the Arduino underneath the robot, which is what controls our speed controllers on the motors. We've also got a couple of little safety features. So on the side is a switch for our battery for the wheels. There's also a second battery in the top which powers the NUC, and for that we have a little fuse in series there to make sure that if something happens to short, we don't destroy the computer. So the software basically consisted of the hardware interface of the stereo camera, uh, and the, the idea was that you want to take the 3D points that you have on the object and on the sidelines, uh, project them onto the ground plane, 
and then, and then for each image frame, figure out a straight line in 2D space as to where you should go. So that camera data goes into a big computer at the top of the robot. That does all our processing, so it works out where the lines are and then how to move the robot to stay in the lines. And then this computer gives information to a little smaller computer, an Arduino at the bottom. And that Arduino translates these motion commands into motor signals that are sent out to our speed controllers that drive the motors. I think the stereo vision itself was pretty robust. So actually getting the 3D points, uh, that even just the way that the camera was mounted um, in such a way to avoid the minimum distance problem. Yeah, I think for, on the whole, uh, the, the vision analysis code was, itself was quite robust. What are your thoughts before the big day? We're gonna win. We're gonna win? Do you agree, Matt? So on competition day, we had testing available from about eight o'clock or nine o'clock, I think, in the morning. So we made sure we got there nice and early to get all our testing time underneath us. So we got there, set up, started driving around the track and we found that yeah our car wasn't the fastest the other cars were a bit quicker than us quite often that being said many of them were still going off the track hitting walls hitting people that sort of stuff so no one's design was perfect and I guess over the day we saw the flaws in our design the things that it did well and likewise other teams what they did wrong what they could have done better what did work well for them and at the end of the day we'd learned quite a lot about what it takes to build a car that can do well at this competition. Just having the thing work, like actually read, like, hey, this is a yellow line, hey, this is a blue line, avoid that and go forward. Um, that was, like, uh, it works. That was, actually just seeing it move, was, uh, was actually a big takeaway. Our robot, in order to deal with the twists and turns, had to like stop, turn, stop, turn. Um, it was a bit slow, but even that I think was, it was a good, good first try, very good first try. And we ended up fifth out of 16 opponents. I'd say not too bad, not too bad for the first time. I think the biggest thing we would do differently is a uh, more reliable steering mechanism because currently we use skid steering and it's very hard to predict uh, how the robot's actually going to turn based on your given control signal. So we would likely use Ackerman steering, so that's one where the wheels themselves actually turn. Since the competition, I uh, got really inspired to actually look up uh, the chassis, what chassis to use, um, as well as better hood designs that the robot could have. Seeing what other teams have done made us really want to go back, try again next time and make our design even better because it was our first time there. We didn't have that much experience working with cars. We didn't have that much consultancy for the team. It was all basically us by ourselves trying to work this thing out. So having been there for one year, having seen what the competition is all about, we've got literally a big list of stuff to change for next year. And we think that if we can implement these changes really well, we've got a good chance of winning next time. The fact that we were just like there for three days talking with each other, like was actually a huge, like, boon for ideas and stuff like that. I came over with a thing of a million things that we can do to get people more involved or do new things. I guess it's just good to see what else people are doing and who's out there. Like if you're in mechatronics, you sort of have lots of classes with people in your same grade doing the same subjects with the same experience. But working on this competition, for example, I got to meet much older students who had much more experience doing different things to me. And that meant we could exchange lots of ideas to help each other become better engineers. I want to organise uh, some workshops in terms of robotics. So I want to get the ball rolling on some more competitions, entering competitions, and yeah, just try get that as far as I can for next year. To get involved with the USRC, you can visit our Facebook page, just search uh, UCID Robotics Club, or you can visit our website, UCIDRobotics.club. USRC is a very new club. We've only been around for a couple of months, so definitely, if you're interested in robotics, if you're at UCID, all that sort of stuff, hit us up on Facebook and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on what we're doing.